In this video, I'm going to be giving some information about the most commonly used forms of contraception. And how well a contraception works depends on how well you stick to the instructions, how old you are and how often you have sex. On average, we say about 80 to 90 percent of sexually active women will become pregnant in one year if they don't use any contraception. So today I'm going to cover off things including the different types of pills, condoms and the newer longer active reversible contraceptions. I just add that if you do want to stop taking the contraception at any point to think about having a baby then you should start taking folic acid and I'll add a link for some more information on that. Combined oral contraceptive pill. This contains two hormones estrogen and progesterone which are similar to the hormones we already have in our bodies and it works by stopping the eggs from being released each month and it also thins the lining of the womb and thickens the mucus in the neck of the womb to make it much harder for that sperm to be able to get through and find an egg. If it's used perfectly, it's 99% effective, which means less than one woman in 100 would be pregnant within a year. But life's not perfect, we're not perfect, and in real life, around nine women in 100 will be pregnant in a year using the pill. But not everyone can use the combined pill. So it may not be suitable for you, for example, if you are over 35 and you smoke, uh, if you're very overweight, if you've had a history of stroke, heart problems, high blood pressure, if you have migraine with aura, if you've had a blood clot in the past, or if you take certain medications. But if you are healthy well, and you can carry on taking it quite safely until you are 50. And the best news about the combined oral contraceptive pill is that there has been changes recently. It's off license, but we have what's now called the extended regime as recommended use. This means you no longer have to have a period every month. You can take your packets back to back. For example, you could take three packets back to back and then have a four day break to have a little period. Or you could just keep taking the packets back to back until eventually you'll have a little bleed and stop for four days and then restart. And this is actually beneficial for various reasons. First of all, you're not having periods, that sounds good. Um, secondly, um, because you're not having periods, you're not losing all that blood each month, so you're not getting low on iron, you might feel like you've got more energy. Thirdly, actually it's more effective, so you've got less risk of actually getting pregnant. So that sounds good, and actually people find they tend to have less side effects with it as well. So I would definitely recommend, if you're going to use a combined oral contraceptive pill, go for one of the extended regime options. So some advantages of the pill include it can make your periods more regular, lighter, it can help with symptoms related to periods such as premenstrual syndrome, menopausal symptoms, it can help with problems associated with endometriosis and um, polycystic ovarian syndrome. It can help reduce your risk of cancer of the ovary, of the colon and of the uterus and uh, it can help with acne uh, for some people. So lots of really good reasons why the combined pill could be a good option for you. But there are some downsides. You might get temporary side effects. So some people do find they have mood problems, they have breast tenderness, um, they have some nausea. Often this settles, but if it doesn't, you might want to switch to an alternative type of pill. Um, it can increase your blood pressure and there is a small risk of increase of blood clots thrombosis and a small risk of increase of cancer of the cervix and breast cancer. But these risks do stop when you stop the pill. People worry about putting on weight when they're on the combined pill, but actually studies have shown that some people lose weight, some people put on weight, and some people don't have either. So I think don't worry too much about that when you're thinking about which pill to choose. You don't need to take the pill at the same time every day, but it's a good idea to have a routine so you don't forget the pill. So maybe like leave it next to your toothbrush or something like that. And in terms of fertility, once you've stopped taking the combined pill, your fertility returns to normal, usually within a few days. So that's nothing to worry about. Um, there are different types of pills, so if you're finding the pill you're on is leading you to be moody, hungry, anything like that, then try a different type of pill. I mentioned acne and there are some pills that are specifically licensed for use in acne like Dianet, um, but they're considered not to be ideal for long term use. <clears throat> and there are some new pills on the market which are claimed to be more natural hormones, things like Culara and Zoli, but the evidence suggests actually that they're not any more beneficial and they're just more expensive, so for the moment we're not recommending those ones. In terms of missed pill advice, if you vomit within three hours of taking your pill or you have 24 hours or more of diarrhea, then consider that a missed pill. And obviously sometimes we forget to take the pill. So if that happens, um, I'm going to add a link in, this, uh, in the notes so you can have a look because it's quite complicated depending on whereabouts you are in your cycle as to whether or not you need to take the emergency contraceptive pill. The mini pill, also known as the progestogen only pill or the POP because it only contains progestogen, which is a hormone found within our bodies already. And it works by thickening the mucus in the neck of the womb and most of the versions we use today also prevent ovulation. In terms of effectiveness, it's about as effective as the combined pill, 
but we used to think of it as not as good because you only used to have a three hour window so it was easy to forget the pill but actually all the variants we use today pretty much have got a 12 hour window so it's much easier not to forget to take your pill um, some side effects do include uh, spotty skin and breast tenderness and some irregular bleeding but for some women they find it really beneficial especially for those who can't use the combined pill for example if you're over 35 and you smoke or you are over 50 because the mini pill can be safely used up until the menopause and if you do want to stop the mini pill and get pregnant anytime your fertility should return to normal within a few days so that's everything about the pill options for contraception let's find a little bit more about longer acting reversible contraception the depot this is an injection delivered into the thigh or the bottom every 12 weeks and like the mini pill it contains progestogen it works in the same way to prevent pregnancy but actually it's a little bit more effective so if a hundred women are having the depot injection for a year we'd expect about six of them to have an unplanned pregnancy it's really long lasting and convenient so you don't have to worry about forgetting pills and in fact there are text reminder services um, and apps to help you schedule your next injection by one year of use most people don't have any periods at all and for those that do have periods they tend to be lighter and less painful when when you can get some irregular bleeding but it does tend to settle down so the downsides to the depo injection well some people just hate injections so it would never even be an option for them and as I said, you can get the irregular bleeding. You can also get some changes with your mood, with your sex drive, you can get some breast tenderness and you can get some weight gain. And for some people who are maybe at risk of osteoporosis, it's not a good option for them because it can cause some bone thinning. So we tend to review every two years whether or not the depot injection is the right contraception for you to continue on. But if it is, then you can keep on taking it all the time up until you're 50. It's worth bearing in mind that unlike a lot of the other contraceptions, your fertility does take a little bit of time to get back to normal. So on average, it's about six months after your last injection for your fertility to come back. It can be earlier, it can be later, but that's just worth bearing in mind in case you did want to think about starting a family. The implant. The implant is a small piece of plastic about the size of a matchstick that gets placed into your arm about here. Like the mini pill and like the depot injection, it also contains progestogen. But actually, it's much more effective. In fact, it's one of the most effective forms of contraception. So it's about 99% effective because you can't forget it and it, it lasts up to five years. So you're less likely to miss your next appointment to get it changed. You can have it taken out anytime if you want. And if you do, then your fertility usually takes about a week to come back. Most people don't have any periods when they're on the implant, but those who do, again, it's gonna be lighter and less painful. On the downsides, you do have to have a little injection of local anaesthetic when the implant is being fitted into the arm. There's some tiny risk of nerve injury um, and infection from when this is fitted. But for most women, they get it fitted and they can forget about it. They may have some irregular spotting, but again, it usually settles. The hormonal coil. The hormonal coil is a little bit of plastic that sits inside the womb and releases progestogen, the same hormone that we discussed in the implant and the mini pill and the depot injection. And it's just as effective as the implant, so it's one of the most effective contraceptive options that are. It's over 99% effective at preventing pregnancy. And it looks a little bit like this. It's fitted into the womb by a nurse or doctor, and it lasts five years, so another one you can fit and forget. It can be quite uncomfortable having it fitted, but as you can see, it is very tiny, um, and there can be some use of local anaesthetic. Do mention to whoever's fitting it if you do feel some discomfort and you might want to have some painkillers for afterwards if you get some abdominal cramping. Now, some people do get a lot of irregular bleeding when you first start on the coil, the hormonal coil, and some people, they just want to stop because they say, I've been taking it for eight weeks and I've just been bleeding. But I always encourage women just to try and stick with it because usually after three months, um, the bleeding does completely settle and most women don't have any bleeding on it at all. And then you've got five years of protection and no periods so for a lot of women it's a real win you do just need to have a little bit of patience at the beginning there is a small risk of developing an infection or damage to the womb or it becoming displaced so you can check if it's in the right position by feeling for the threads that that you can hang down so if you place a finger inside the vagina usually you can feel for the threads if the coil fails and you do get pregnant you are at a risk of getting what's called an ectopic pregnancy, so that's just something to bear in mind. The copper coil. This is a copper coil, 
And as you can see, it looks very similar to the hormonal coil, but it's got no hormones in it. The copper works by preventing the egg from fertilizing and implanting in the womb. And it can last up to 10 years. So a real winner for those people who just want to fit and forget. It's effective immediately and can be used by anyone over any age. Uh, the downsides are, the main one really, is that it can make your periods heavier and more painful. It also carries some of the same risks as the hormonal coil, so there is some risks with having it put in. Uh, it can potentially move very rarely, and um, if you do become pregnant, which is unlikely, there is a risk of ectopic pregnancy. So the copper coil, like the hormonal coil, gets placed inside the vagina, and I hope you can see from this picture, it gets placed in the vagina and then sits very comfortably inside the womb here. And these threads hang down, and if you pop your finger inside your vagina, you can usually feel them, but your partner shouldn't be able to feel them during sex, but you can check that everything is in place. Fertility awareness. This is also known as natural family planning, and is often favored by those who don't want to use any sort of hormonal contraception. And what it means is you have to be really become aware of your own body's fertility signals. And that includes things like your body temperature and your cervical mucus. And sometimes you need to take like daily reports of this and to track it over time. Then you become aware of when you are a period you may get pregnant and you need to use extra protection such as condoms over those times. And if some women who are really meticulous about this and do it perfectly can have about a 99% effectiveness. So it can be really good. And obviously you have the benefit of no side effects from the hormones. Um, but you do need to be aware that if you are not as meticulous, you're going to risk getting pregnant. And also that stress, illness, things like that can also affect your fertility. Sterilization. It's worth mentioning that sterilization actually isn't as effective at preventing pregnancy as many of the other long-acting reversible contraceptives we've mentioned. And it does have other side effects as well. Um, female sterilization is considerably more complex than male sterilization, so that's often a better option for couples. But it's worth thinking about the fact that it needs to really be considered as irreversible because there are opportunities privately to pay for attempted reversal, but it doesn't always work. And then you don't get some of the benefits that you get with contraception, such as no periods. Condoms. A quick word about condoms. Really, the most important thing is they are the only form of contraception that also prevents STI, sexually transmitted infections. And also, it's just worth bearing in mind that they do need to fit well and so they can sit comfortably and not slip off. Also, if you are changing between different forms of contraception or you're using the morning after pill, sometimes you need to use con condoms over that period to make sure you've got extra protection or you can use abstinence. So make sure if in those situations you check what's right for you at that time. Okay, that's everything. I hope you found that all really helpful. I'll add some extra links in the description if you want to read a little bit more. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.